If you find yourself with a camera in your hand and want to learn how to use it, please subscribe to this channel, like the videos, comment below. Hey Protoss family, today I'm giving you a little bit of an illustration in a photo shoot today of how I light a setup, whether it's something like this tabletop setup or anything else. I specifically light from my background forward so that I know what the background is going to look like and how the light spillover from lighting the background is going to affect the photograph of the item I'm shooting. So specifically, I have used this grid spot up here to light the background and you can see with the modeling lamp it's very intense on this background. I wanted the background not to be completely white but this is kind of a cream paper anyway. I wanted to make sure that I could see specifically what is background and what is my object. So I want the edges to be clearly defined and it's very difficult for this reason that the item is white and my background is going to be close to white but the slight color difference is not going to be huge as long as my camera is white balanced. So let's take a look at and I'm going to go through this photograph uh, process to let you know uh, how I'm doing things and what I'm doing to change one thing to the next. Uh, specifically, I'm going to be shooting as low a ISO as I can so that I have a greater shadow density and the contrast there is going to help me to separate between this pure white ceramic and the off-white background. So somewhere around uh, ISO 100 or 125, I'm going to do a fairly fast shutter speed because I don't need to have any stop motion, but I don't want to have a lot of um, ambient light added to my shot. I want to make sure that my strobes are my main light addition here. And the uh, aperture, the f-stop on my lens is going to be somewhat fairly wide open because I don't need to stop down the uh, focus to blur the background. It's going to be fairly white and not attracting any attention. There's not really much of a foreground because the sweep from the background, I just kicked my light here, from the background all the way into the foreground is one giant piece of paper that sweeps up into a background. So there's there's not a lot of uh, confusion or tension being taken away from anything in the foreground because it's a similar white paper. So let's take a look here at the shoot and how it comes out and we'll give you a visual as to what the end product of our photo shoot is. I'm shooting at 1 1 60th of a second, ISO 100, and aperture for my lens is 16. I'm going to bring my shutter speed down to 1 25th of a second and bring my aperture up to f18. Now I'm going to bring my ISO up to 125, keeping my aperture at f18 and my shutter speed at 1 1 25th of a second. I have to take my camera off the tripod and give you a view in the video camera of what I have done and how that looks. So I'm going to come around and give you a view of my LCD screen and keep it as dark as I can. Okay, so what we've got going on here, there we go, now that I dimmed my LED screen, you can see here that the frog comes out and stands out from the background fairly well. But it's not a great contrast either. So we stopped it down from, you can see up here, 1 1 60th of a second and the f-stop 16 of the lens. So now we go up, we stopped it down to 1 1 25th of a second instead of 1 1 60th. And we also went out to f18 instead of f16. So that made it a little bit darker. That's our first, 1 1 60th of a second at f16. This is 1 1 25th at f18. So now there's a little bit more contrast and density of shadow there from the f16 and 1 1 60th of a second to the 1 1 25th and f18. Then stepping back out a little bit in ISO rating, you can see how that softened everything up, including the shadows, but the highlights are even more uh, accentuated in the f18 1 1 25th of a second but shooting at a um, iso rating of 125 instead of 100. so you see why the iso is important that it can adjust your contrast by adding highlight 
and softening shadow at the same time as uh, making it look brighter because you've got the, the change of the sensitivity in how fast the sensor receives light. To give you an illustration and getting this set up so that I was sure of what I was doing, I shot uh, a water container at uh, the same ratings or nearly the same ratings, 1 one sixtieth of a second at f18 and ISO rating of 100. And I knew that I could see through this item because it was water, but the sides of the container were gonna be a little bit darker. Because of those things, I got to see the reflection on the sides and what I would be able to see in the frog in a ceramic container like that. But I also got to see the reflection and I would know that the ceramic being a fired, uh, finished, shiny surface is going to give me that kind of reflection that you're gonna see around the edge of this uh, fairly uh, reflective plastic. The inside of the little container that holds the lid up there is going to reflect the light of the background and the, the brightness of it from the background light in that grid spot strobe. But you're also seeing a little bit of the white uh, paper as it wraps around this object and how it looks uh, reflecting the foreground paper and the background paper. So I hope that helps and makes sense as when you light something, how you get it lit and what it's going to show and in, in effect and how that's going to appear. I am very close here and, and very much in your face. Let's see if I can adjust this a little bit here. Yeah, that's better. All right, so that way, I, my intention for giving you this video is to share with you how the wraparound light can cause issues, but also how lighting from the background to the foreground is a benefit so that you're not overlighting your subject and trying to get that dialed down. But when you dial down the light on your subject, you're dialing down the, the light on your background. When you get your background lit, then you light your subject, your foreground light of lighting your subject, is gonna spill over a little bit onto your background. But it's not so important if your background is being overlit a lot, then you can adjust the background light alone because it's not lighting your subject. But, if you uh, dial up your background light, it probably will affect the lighting of your subject unless there's that separation between your subject and its background. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments below, just leave them in the comment section down below and give us a thumbs up for other people to be able to see the videos as well. If you're not yet a subscriber, we would love to have your subscription. Just click that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on. Thank you so much. God bless.